Welcome back to another episode of Suck a Drinker and Friends. Today we have the specialist uh, Susan Quinn uh, behind the camera, as you can see on the quality and the whole technique, and some beautiful ladies here joining us. But aside from that, we have two really amazing guests coming in today. Two people have shaped who I am in this in this industry and and world and taste and all that. Uh, first of all, ladies first, and uh, a lady that has no. Um, pelos in la lengua or hair in the tongue as they say in Spanish, which meaning she will say anything as it comes, no filter. Uh, so hide the children, uh, put some earmuffs around. But somebody I worked with before, an amazing chef, uh, part of the uh, Spotswood Winery family. Uh, she had a restaurant downtown called Kelly's Nova Days Cafe. And now she has a funny farm, but I'll let you tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, aside, an amazing person who's a repeat on the show, and somebody who's really taught me on uh, pairings and wine world, and uh, we go way back. Really, really amazing uh, person, Chris Blanchard. Master some DJ and fried chicken extraordinaire. Oh. And let me open oh. some sake. As, as please. Kelly, yeah. please introduce please. herself. Please. Oh, hello. I had no idea that I was doing this, so I don't really know. That's uh, the best when you have Yeah, no what idea. to do, but as soon as I get my sake, I'm sure I will be much. Uh, much better. <laughs> much, yeah, much funnier. But then you need to, uh, I guess, try the chicken. I don't really know what to say Excellent. about the chicken. So, so yeah. So, first we'll try a sparkling sake because uh, one of uh, Chris's favorite things is champagne and fried chicken. And if you don't know him, now you know. Uh, Chris, tell us a little bit about your fried chicken adventures. Uh, yeah, we have a little fried chicken place. Very inventive name. Blanchard's oh. Fried Chicken here in Napa, yes. and it's sort of a uh, pop-up mm -hmm. okay. takeout place where uh, we rent a kitchen, catering kitchen, and then we just go to town doing buckets and buckets and buckets of fried chicken. I didn't know southern that. Southern sides. See, yeah, that's now me. I'm that's getting me. I'm right here. it. And here, look what I've done. Now I'm afraid I'm going to be biting oh, my nails. Chicken? I already did. It's right there. So we got we have collard greens. This is old um, southern recipes that my grandma oh. uh, passed down. Collard greens, biscuits, and mac and cheese, and the whole work. So. And then awesome. uh, also, uh, oh, I yeah, Master Sonia, yeah. I work with a great winery called Vine Hill Ranch up in uh, Oakville. Absolutely. Oh. So no shortage of star here. Uh, well, with that, let's say cheers yeah. and happy birthday week to Chris as well. Oh, Thank you. happy birthday. Thank you cheers, birthday. everyone. Cheers, This Al. is an amazing style of, uh, amazing effort of sparkling sake from uh, Dasai Brewery, which is like the Antinori family Ooh. of sake in Japan. Really well known. Oh, Outstanding nice. little uh, zippy style. It is zippy. Zippity doo dah. Hmm. No, that's really good. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that fun? Yeah, it's very different. Good. It's got a, bit of the, a little bit of the least reintroduced as an Igori style. A little weight. Obviously, no champagne, as Chris knows, mm. but something along those lines. Oh, that's great. In our world. Oh, yummy. Very fun and yummy. Yes. With that, I'm going to pour one of the serious sakes that we're going to be talking about today. And Kelly, please don't be humble and just explain a little bit about your humble beginnings and uh, how you end up with fried chicken today. Uh, fried chicken today? Fried chicken just for you. You know, I, I had no idea and since wow. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know, we might be mud wrestling in the Napa River to see who made a better batch. But, Make sure you get you that know. on film. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. If the tide's out. Yeah. If the tide's out. Um, anyway, I was in the restaurant business for uh, most of my life. Um, got my training by actually just working in restaurants and not uh, not formally educated but I'm also a farmer and I have a acre and a half farm out in uh, Carneros so I am growing the funny all, farm all kinds of things and it is the funny farm and I'm even Here's growing some, some funny stuff. things this year if you know what I mean nasturtiums yeah that's yeah. the funny part yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the funny part some you know lots of herbs uh, stone fruit I have chickens a horse um, some, uh, a couple of dogs, a couple of cats. One's been missing for two weeks, so he may be, uh, I don't know where he is. Yeah, his Let's name is- Let's put a public he, announcement yeah, here for need, It's like, for where's Cook? I know, well, he goes off sometimes. But anyway, so that is what I do. And then I uh, I host parties out there at the Funny Farm, and they're, they're really fun. The menus vary all the time. Uh, actually, the last one we did was for uh, Mandavi, the visitor yeah. center, and we we did do fried chicken. Oh yeah, and it got the blue ribbon. So I might be coming the to work for ribbon. you. Yeah, right. it did get the blue ribbon. <laughs> so I may be coming to work for you soon. Awesome. So can one you, of the events. I'm oh, sorry. To I was just like, can anybody go out there and buy produce from you? You can just come and get some. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's better. Okay. I, and I have. I'll tell you where I am, okay. and you can just come out because I have way too much. Totally. Don't say it on camera. Yeah. Gonna have 60 I know. People yeah. lined up. I'm not going to give you the address. Exactly. <laughs> it's it's secret. It's yeah. Exactly. It's, it's okay. the secret farm. One of the events that I remember doing with Kelly growing up is uh, a Kentucky Derby party. Yes. At a really beautiful property up uh, country. Saint Lena. Yep. Saint Lena, and Canyon. there was always plenty of fried chicken, and that was the, yes. the theme, right? People yes. came from everywhere to this party yes. and it was one of those things anyway to wrap up of what we're doing here today is I had this I woke up with this epiphany of hey it's Chris's birthday week and he is known for champagne and chicken so I thought let's challenge it and do a little sake and chicken and then I thought who am I kidding who's gonna be making this chicken you didn't have a pop-up this week and then very serendipitous Kelly Novak shows up to the bar uh, Friday night uh, Saturday night Saturday night, Saturday night. Saturday night. Yeah. She shows up, first of all, at 8, 11.30 in the morning with buckets of tomatoes, a uh, little bit of uh, shiso and all kinds of uh, greens and eggplants, the most beautiful eggplants. Anyway, she comes back for dinner that night and sits down and talking. As she said, I said, oh, I'll bring the kids to the farm this week. And she says, I have a little fried chicken. And the light just went on. And I thought, perfect. We're going to have Chris come in. She's going to make some chicken. And yeah. See, if this is not a taste day. of, because obviously it's not yeah. a fair, yeah, fair, we didn't give you a just heads make up. Sure, make sure you guys say mine is the best you've ever had. Oh, I you will. Know, That's just, just, just today, you know, and then yeah. I'll be okay. But without further ado, what I wanted to do is do a little taste of two different styles of sake, uh, very different. Uh, let's, how about everybody would just cheer again for, for Chris, for Kelly, and finish all this one so we can reduce that glass. Yeah. Okay, good. Cheers. Cheers. It, it is a drinking show after all. Yes, it is. Thank God. That's why we're here. Exactly. <laughs> the more, the better. <laughs> we're going to do two styles. The one you have right now in your glass that we just poured out of the big bottle is the Unoma Josen. This is a producer that sits in Nigata. So imagine this guy's life. Nigata is known for really pretty daiginjas that are like known to be like really floral, feminine in style. And he wakes up there every morning and during winter he's in between mountains. Thank you. And he's supposed to make this style. So one day, very much, well, I'm not gonna say like my idea of having the fried chicken and sake, but he wakes up and he says, wait a second, why can I make the biggest style of sake coming out of Nigata? And he does. In a combination, thank you so much, Laura. Combination of yeast and styles, he makes wakes up and makes this style. Give it a quick nose. It's oh, called a Uonoma, one. and okay. he's not kidding. On the bottle it says full flavored. And it is as rich as you get in the in the sake world. Very oh, kind of oxidated rich. style, richer, yeah. big yes. shoulders. I like that. The second one, so we don't bother everybody. I'm it's called at the label like I would understand anything. I know. No, it's exactly. Like, it's just it like a pretty a label. label. A little fruity. <laughs> it's like yeah, uh, dry, <laughs> nice on the finish. Yeah, I think that's so what it says. The one you're holding here, Chris. This is an urban brewery. Completely different to what he's doing over there in Niigata. He's, their guys are right outside of Tokyo. And actually, we're very excited. Laura and I are going to go visit it next week. Actually, in two weeks, we'll be at the brewery and see what they're all about. Yes. Oh. So this brewery, some guys... I think I'm coming. You should. Yeah. Yeah. We should all go. Right, yeah. should all go. Wouldn't that be fun? Yes. Yeah. Susan, you're in? Exactly. Morimoto, <laughs> Morimoto. picks up the tab. Yeah, we'll be there. Done. Thank you, Morimoto. <laughs> Thank you. So these guys are in an urban brewery where it's against all tradition in sake brewing. They're sourcing the water from the south and the rice from the north. And beyond that, they're doing four yeasts into one sake. So they brew four yeasts, which amazingly, one of the things I want to see when I visit the breweries, how in the, in the world they're putting four yeast into one room and not have them fight and agree and then homogenize. But so beyond that, yeast? four different yeasts wow. into one brewery and then they blend them. So yeast, for everybody that doesn't know, has a big component into the sake in terms of the aromas and the everything that gives you florally or peachy or yeah. fruits. So in this case, you have an orchestration of different yeast playing in there. And it's like a, I don't know, like a the symphony just playing all together at the same time. Anyway, without further ado, I want to introduce Kelly Novak's fried chicken. Please, it's about time. Yeah, I want to hear. I wow. Some, yeah, I let's see. Questions. Ladies, okay. and I also want to introduce <laughs> a few of our friends here. We have an amazing palate, uh, Laura Coffer. 
We have uh, some friends from Caymus, some friendships from uh, Texas, and a new friend as well here today from Napa. It is panko. So I did, yeah. I, well, I thought I must do panko because it's yeah, Japanese. I know. Oh, and I made, extra, I made a platter just for you. <laughs> thank you. Excellent. So, get me started. Yes. without further ado, yes. please, are Laura. There, yes. Are there initial expectations as to which sake will pair the best from the panel? All right. A, you know the fried chicken. Yeah. We gotta see what her style is. I'm I know. More on the you have to taste. Side. Yeah, you have to taste it. All right, I guess the that's, chick, we'll and taste I, the chicken. I'm going yeah, in. yeah, yeah. Go in Ladies, for the kill. Ladies, don't be shy. Yeah. And go for yeah. the chicken. No, they're yeah. here's some napkins as well. Yeah. And I'm hoping they stayed crisp because mm -hmm. no yeah. pressure. Yeah, I know. I'm very nervous now. <laughs> <laughs> mm. All right. What do you think? Let Finally, Eddie. The yeah. There he goes. Now, don't try to Delicious. steal my secrets. Delicious. Mmm. Wonderful. Well, it's not, too, uh, it's not too spicy, not too salty. Anthony? Mm -hmm. Nice and mild. Mm -hmm. I would say, um, I can't remember what I, ha what I had, but this one that's cold, probably this one here. Hand me a glass, please. That one right there. Oh, that's good. But good. it stays... I mean, I did it oh, like excellent. an hour ago, so... Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So, yeah. having so, tried the chicken and not the sake, what do you think, sir? Um, I think it's fantastic. I, I thought the first one might be a little too, the sparkling one a little too sweet maybe, or like if this if this was really spicy, I think that first chicken? sparkling sake Absolutely. might have gone really well with it. But since this is a little more mild, not too hot, I kind of like the, uh, what was the second one you poured? This, or the last the one? one yeah, the second one is the Unoma. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. No, that full oh, flavor. No. And the third one, this the last one, one is the Tamura. This don't, is the most feminine. Don't try and remember this at home. <laughs> <laughs> really? Just remember that sake. Kind of works mm. with fried chicken. It's really great. Spicy would go better with the mm -hmm. uh, sweet sparkling style. But in general, I think the pairing with uh, sake and chicken is awesome. I do too. Mm. Yeah, it's really good. I think it is good. Wow. I just tried it with the Aonoma. Mm -hmm. Also, mm -hmm. keep in mind, temperatures of sake affect a lot of the final flavor. That's something I learned a lot from Anthony, who decided to join us now. He likes to heat up some sakes depending on the richness and, and the style and put them into context. So this one on purpose, it's straight out of the out the storage room, if you will. So room temperature. I like it room it's temperature. A little more expansive, definitely. Oh, one. That yeah, one's good, one. yeah. Totally. And then the Ginginga. Ginginga refers to the rice they use, actually, from Tamura Chuzo. This is colder, obviously. Uh, to me, it's more at the nose. It's like a Sauvignon Blanc, right? In a that way. one's better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah? Yeah, I like that better. That's a little fuller for some reason. It's not pairing as well. What do you guys think? So which one, the cold one or the this one. warm one? Yeah, that one's good. awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really good. Mm. Yeah. Some good tender. And I think, so there, I don't know if like you heard, but nuggets. she used panko. Yeah. Which is really cool, you know, with the theme of the Japanese. Yeah. Well, and I did panko because I was doing small things that didn't have to cook for very long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I didn't um, soak. I didn't start you soaking. Or I did. I did with hot sauce and thyme, and I even what grated some uh, ginger in there. <laughs> ginger? What kind of hot sauce? I can't tell you. I'd have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. To tell me. <laughs> now this is uh, this is fun, and I'll tell you what. In my in my own ignorant world, I thought, oh, fried chicken's gonna go better with this. But no, you get into this intricacies, and without having two experts on fried chicken here, I would have never known that. I mean, you're using yeah. panko instead of regular flour. Yes. All this different things. And it would be different, different, different if you used flour. Like if you brought your right. chicken in and we did. Yeah. Both of them. I feel like she's totally calling you for thing. a taste of I for the it, next show. Yep, I think that's it's just coming. me. Yep. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> Tenders are hard to do too because yeah. it's nice and uh, tender. And yeah. Hence the name. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I, know. I know. I don't like calling them tenders because it yeah, reminds me of McDonald's. But anyway, they are. Um, those are called McNuggets. Yeah, those. Are <laughs> yeah, McNuggets. Exactly. You can make a killing on these McNuggets, though. I need to get. I need to start marketing somehow. <laughs> Funny Farm That's McNuggets. Really Funny Farm McNuggets. <laughs> That's for sure. Now I would like everyone to try an nasturtium, which are amazing, and I think it's going to pair fun with one of the sockets oh, as well. That's a good idea. What? You eat flowers? Yeah. This is the most beautiful flowers to eat. Oh. Actually, the other day I walked around when she brought like some. I walked around with one on my, on my... And it put everybody in a good mood. It was pretty pretty exciting. There you go. Yeah. If you're going to San Francisco... <laughs> <laughs> it's a I summer thought that of love. Would, it would be Hawaii. Mm. Let's talk dirty in Hawaiian. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Not tonight, though. <laughs>
Wow, that is spicy. Really fun. That's good. But it's wow. good with the, uh, I would, for lack of a better name, the oh. warm one. <laughs> Talk about a flower that really delivers. Yes, that it sure does. Pepper. Yeah. Kelly just told me that she's been growing them for years and using them as gardeners, and, and she's never eaten one. I've never eaten one. Is it because is, they're poisonous? It, yes. They, well, <laughs> this variety is poisonous. Wait, did she eat it this time? <laughs> <laughs> she ate it today, right? The, the strict night will be. No, mine was special, but the strict night will be kicking in any time. Then I'm going to take over the show. Oh. There you go. <laughs> Like, and falling. yours was okay too, so you could just keep rolling. Mm. <laughs> but sorry, you guys, you better eat some more chicken McNuggets. <laughs> so, what do you think on the pairing for that? Are the colors any different? I think, I think that one. Yeah, we were just in. Good. That, that one is nice. Yeah. There's like a peppery, spicy note that comes back. I don't want to guess, but note. that's yeah. it. Oh, no, this one. Excellent. Yeah. Um, yes, the, the warmer one. Is this one. The warmer one? Over here. Yeah, Come on, it's on the, over here. The, 80 yeah. on that bottle. <laughs> the what? <laughs> the number on the middle of that bottle, the 80. Oh, this is a little trivia for everybody that, that knows about sake or that's learning about sake. So there's the three divisions of Junmai, or Honjoso, Ginjo, and Dai Ginjo. So forever has been that for regulation, 30% or more jumps into the Junmai or Honjoso. Now this is a new thing that within the last few months got passed by the Japanese government. You don't have to be 30% to call it a Junmai or Honjoso. I know for a lot of people it's just like blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna turn it off right now or keep drinking. But <laughs> for the geeks, so 30% represented what you had to do to make it a premium sake and now you don't have to polish that much. You can go below, but you have to state it on the bottle. So per Laura's request, the bottle says 80 right there. So it's 80% remaining meaning they took away 20% out of the grain of rice. Oh. So it's a rougher oh, style and now to wrap it all up, let's say this is a, uh, a grain of rice and you start taking the layers out to make it pure from Junmai to Ginjo to Dai Ginjo, the more you take away. And in this style, <laughs> hey! Oh. <laughs> Eddie, Let's go settle down! Race. Hey! Uh, yeah, get to work over there. Organic. Just anyway. Jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's organic. There's no strict knife. Daniel. Tomatoes. You know, we're good. Daniel. Anyway, don't throw tomatoes in a, in a restaurant, please. Well, we've but got plenty. on this occasion, we have plenty. Yeah, we've got plenty. On that note, let's try the tomatoes right out of Kelly's oh. car. Tomatoes are something that's really high in umami, right? Yes, so naturally. Well, I'm so looking for the one that doesn't have the strict knife. Do I think it's this one. Which one would you pair with something that's very high? A special ingredient. Yeah. I I think the kinginga, a little more higher acid, more prettier in style, personally would play pretty well. But let's talk to the master some. Oh, I'm just a question. We were Laura. chatting. Oh, um, a really high food, like a tomato. Like which sake do you think might work best? Um, Are there wines that work really well with high umami? Usually, yeah, like well, you know, wine like you work mm -hmm. in an Italian restaurant like Sangiovese or, or Tempranillo or something with higher acidity. I brought so many. Great Sangiovese, all of them. Tomato sauce there. wine there is, right? Mm -hmm. So with this in, in mind, I, I hate to say I, I like this versatile one, referred to as the cold one over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plus, I would never be able to tell you the name of it because Tamura. Ah, tamu I You're say to that. Hawaii, tamura. They have Tamura's uh, tamura. stores. Yeah. Mm. They do the poke and they do all the spirits and stuff. That's yeah. how I remember it. Tamura. Cool. Yeah, so I think. So did you uh, get all of your education about sake in Japan, or did you learn it here? Here and then in Japan, I really. Right. And how many times have yeah. you been to Japan? This is Great. super power, is it? Mm. I really do want to go. My mom and sister. And it's cold. And so refreshing. I'm like, I would oh, totally I, you would love it. it. I know. Well, welcome to the cocktail it. hour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> now we can get busy. Isn't it fun to watch? <laughs> I know. Wow. Well, and that's. I, wow. I grew a ton of them, but and I tasted one a couple of weeks ago. I've never grown that variety before, and I germinated them from wow. seed. So they're like these weird looking things, and it that's wasn't great. ready when I ate it. it it's, I think it's a thicker skinned, uh, more hard. It's like an eggplant. Nothing wrong with that, but you know, yeah, kind of, yeah. Yeah. We're all talking about it, but the people at home can't see that tomato. Yeah, I know. They're, no, they already ate it. Yeah. I was like, toss it away. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Wow. How, is, how is it? How does it taste? Now, I, I just feel really bad for people watching us in Iceland or Russia or the Czech Republic where they don't have this quality tomatoes. 
growing in the yeah, backyard. Exactly. Sorry about that. You can always visit us in Napa. Yep, we're here. We, we have an extra have room at the house. Yep, we've got lots of stuff. Give us a heads up. Suck yep. a drinker at Instagram or <laughs> Eduardo at drinker dot com. Hey, uh, Eduardo, does it make a difference if the if the sake is cold? I mean, because it seems like I like the cold one better all the time because it's cold. Well, it does. If you were to cool it, it does the same effect as it does with a Chardonnay or a Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. When you cool it, it kind of compacts and Tons the flavors are a little more linear. Oh, okay. But when you have a style that's trying to be rough and they're not shy about those rough edges and the, the richness of it, room temperature or a little heat would benefit from it and make it more burly in the same, in the same way. Mm. And I was just honoring the, the brewery in trying to make that style because if I was to chill it, put it in the freezer for an hour, it'll be like closer in style yeah. in a way but you will still get those umami flavors that are will spike up a little bit, but not as much. Mm -hmm. So that's what it does. And if you warm this one, it's still gonna be really pretty on the nose. It's just, the, the palate's gonna be a little more expansive. How come we're, we're not talking about this one very much? Uh, that one's amazing, okay. but that was a little treat for you just to, oh, uh, yeah, to kind of start. Fun. I've never had a sparkling. No, and actually, another brewery, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, I think you, you wanted to ask some. Another brewery we're visiting this trip is called Nagai Shuzo. This gentleman spent uh, a lot of uh, time visiting Champagne and Burgundy, and he mastered making a Champagne-style sake, which when I tasted it, I almost cried. I mean, the, the brioche, the style, the bubbles were outstanding, and I am most curious to go see how they're actually doing it. I kid you not, he had 700 tryouts to make this one style, and in true Japanese fashion for craft, he did not cut any cost. And he's not shy of telling you I failed 700 times. I, it's all recorded. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, short of doing that, <laughs> yeah. he kept trying. Oh. And I, I can't wait to film it and, and give you guys a little insight on how you he came it, to that. Wow. You have it, right? I, it's on order and it's okay. on the way from Japan. I want to envision that it's on a boat somewhere because I thought it'd be by air, it'd be by now hmm. here. Wow. But I will definitely save a bottle yeah. and share it and uh, we'll savor yeah. it together. It's a new knowledge. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, that's proof that sake really has. Well, Sa Saka sees no color or race or religion. Thank God. Right? Uh, <laughs> it goes people, with everything. We've had enough of that, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, yes. for that we have our government. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey. yeah. Let's keep <laughs> government out of Morimoto, please. Let's not please, talk about that. For God's <laughs> sakes. Would, would this work with other things? Because this chicken, and it's not a bad thing, but it yeah. has a lot of salt in it. Yeah. And the, So other salty snacks, do you think sake Yeah, actually, these are the coolest things. In, in Japan, chips. when you walk into a random bar, the first thing they'll do is give you some salty nuts or some salty uh, snacks, and they'll serve you most likely one of these. And in, in a lot of places, like as a compliment, in other places you just say sake, and this is naturally what they bring you out of this size. And it, it's it's that that hand in hand kind of style that goes together. But yeah, anything from dried fish, dried cuttlefish, dried shrimp, dried crabs. Tell me about it. I'm the one with the shellfish allergy, and I really enjoy them. Oh. So we keep the epipen really yeah. close, oh. but it's worth the risk. It's amazing. But I think yeah. salt is. Yeah. I think salt is good with. Yeah, salt with is, is naturally. Yeah. Uh, oh, and actually, I, I'll go yeah. further. Here we have uh -huh. a couple different salts. Here's the salt from Nigata that I want everybody to try. Hyogo, which is from the south, and Miyako, which is from Okinawa, all the way in the island. So I want everyone to grab a little pinch of this. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I should be putting it somewhere. Right there. <laughs> there we go. So grab a little pinch of Niigata sa uh, salt, natural salt. And which one's from Niigata? The, uh, the hot one, the warm one. No, the hot one is you, the number, warm one. Number two. Easy. Well played, oh, well played. Easy, well played. So it's still early, yeah. it's still early. <laughs> The second sake. The, the second sake. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> well, the salt is really good too. Very well played. Mm. Oh my goodness. Is sake only made in Japan or do other? No, that Kelly has an amazing question. I wish okay. you were a little louder as Sorry. you usually are. Well, I know. Well, I, I was. Sake. I was embarrassed. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Just Kelly's question is: Is sake only produced in Japan? No. Jap the Japanese didn't get in time with all these different movements like champagne. Tequila, cava, prosecco, which they're protected, right? So they're they're grown, and you can tell us more about that, Chris, oh. about how the DOCs and all these protections came to be, the DOs. That sounds really boring. Let's eat. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's have more chicken. Yeah, exactly. All right. <laughs> anyway, so Japanese people didn't really get on top of that early enough, and still haven't. They're still working on some sort of protection. So the word but by now, the word sake, right? Not sake is not protected for Japan. No. And I'll give you a little side trivia. Sake, uh, the word sake in Japan means 
alcoholic beverage. It's a blanket for everything that's made with alcohol. Nihonshu, it's sake. So if you go to Japan, don't just sit down and say sake. Just say Nihonshu and they'll give you this rice beverage, deliciously made, multi-parallel fermentation, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, sake as a, as a whole means a, a rice beverage in the world. So places like, I just tried an amazing sake from Mexico that brought me to my knees. Outstanding. And I wish I would have brought more and they're working on bringing it to the US. Uh, amazing. They make sake in, uh, I want to say about 30 states in the US, believe it, have, it or not. Does it have to be made from rice, like in Mexico? It does. Okay. It does have to make, be made from rice, whatever you make it. And who's, there's sake made that? everywhere. Is there a regulation that says sake? This is more of rice? a. There's no legality, if you ask me, about exactly why it's, it has to be made from rice, but people identify sake made from rice. Right. So if you say agave spirit, it's got to be made from agave, in a way. Mm -hmm. That's a great question, worth yeah. digging into more. Yeah. So. Uh, really fascinating style, but it's not protected till now. They're working on it and, and getting into the layers and also creating uh, ABAs per se within different prefectures and styles of, of, of the, the country. As I said, Niigata is known for the, the pretty daikinjos mm -hmm. and other places are, no, are known for bigger styles. So sake that would be made anywhere in the world, is Japan just trying to coin? No, like, no mean, Japanese people are really, really uh, giving and they don't really... Yeah, because wine yeah. is made all over the place exactly i mean what yeah, yeah. So, so it's one of those things that it is just a, a, a regionality thing mm -hmm. and I it's see. not going to be I see. it should have been if you ask a lot of people it should have been protected to where sake is only from japan but it's not and right. they're it's open for everybody to try yeah and it should be i mean every, yeah. you know it's like fried chicken it doesn't just have to be mine or yours they make it everywhere it has with to that be chicken did you have it another does question have to be chicken. You're right. yeah it does. Oh, please <laughs> Please, and uh, with that, we, we have to wrap it up. Otherwise, we're gonna keep here and we're gonna still hang out and eat a lot of chicken and flowers <laughs> and keep this conversation Suck going. Yes. For everybody else, please have some comments and uh, look for us on uh, Instagram or uh, look at us on Facebook or uh, What's your anywhere Instagram? else. Sake Drinker. Sake Drinker? Sake Drinker, easy money. Sake Drinker and Friends, <laughs> YouTube as well. The greatest, one of the greatest sommeliers in the world. <laughs> You're good too. Right there. The nice, yeah. Nicest guy in the world. One of the most knowledgeable people I've ever seen. One of yeah. the best professionals on the floor. He yeah. is the bomb. Yeah. Well, and I, I, I have great his, teachers. All of yeah. And I'm not there yet. Yeah. But all <laughs> of your training at No Bad Days, right? At no Bad Days. So, yeah. Cheers, ladies. Thanks <laughs> Cheers. for joining Cheers. us. Cheers. The most beautiful uh, <laughs> yeah. panel we've ever had here. And knowledgeable. You, Thank you so you much. Too. Susan, you too. Yeah, Love that lipstick. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. <laughs> 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 Yeah, yeah.